Hi, my name is JJ Asgar, and I'm a developer advocate for the IBM Cloud. Today, I'm going to be showing you Code Engine, which has just been recently released by IBM Cloud as a managed serverless platform. You can run your application, job, or container inside of it. And today, I'm going to take a very simple Python application, containerize it, get it up onto a registry, then use uh, Code Engine to actually run it for me. So let's get started. So if you haven't seen this before, this is the Code Engine main website. And just as I said a moment ago, you can run your application, job, or container. I'm actually not going to spend much more time inside of the, the, the GUI here. I'm going to do most of my work through the command line to show you how easy it is to get everything up and going. So let's, let's start off in the very beginning. So as you see here, I have an application which, um, called app.py. I'm going to build a container. So if you bring up this Docker file, as you see, there's a there's a few things that happen. We run Python Slim, and then we run the actual application uh, py or app.py8080. So if I go ahead and show this application, of course, it's a very, very advanced application that returns the statement. This is a temp statement. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and build, oops, build, ah, B -U -I -D, build a container and tag it with v1. As you see, I've already done this, so it was very quick, which is great. Next, I'm going to go ahead and test it to make sure it does what I want. So I'll go ahead and run this container with port 8080. And I believe that is the same SHA. It is. So we'll go ahead and hit Enter. And as you see, we're listening on port 8080 on all, all um, interfaces. So if I go ahead and go to local host 8080, we see that this is a temp statement. We'll also notice that we have our get, so, so we know that we're actually talking to it. Just to verify one more time, I stop it, and as you see, nothing is actually running. So I now have a working Docker container with Python inside of it with a very simple app.py. Next, I need to go ahead and push this container up to a, a registry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use Quay, as you see, I've already done it, just to make sure this is nice and quick. Next, what we're going to need to do is install the Code Engine plugin. Uh, it doesn't come uh, by default with uh, IBM, the IBM Cloud CLI, so you will need to actually install it. I've already installed it, but I'm going to go ahead and update it to make sure you see how quickly this is done. Wonderful. Next, I need to go ahead and target a resource group. So if I type uh, resource group, uh, target. target resource group right there. As you see, I target my default resource group. And then I need to create the container, or create the application, CE. If you are missing something, uh, IBM Cloud will come back and tell you you need to write the, run these, these specific commands. But luckily, because I've already done it, it's, it's, what we've, it's already set up for me. Python example. So I'm going to go ahead and create this Python example with the image of Quay JJ Asgar CE example 1. And there we go. As it's creating, I'm just going to prove to you that it is actually doing something on the other side. So if I go over to this project and I go into JJ testing, we should see applications. And there we go. We are actually deploying our Python example as we speak. We'll take, give it a couple moments just to go ahead and make things happen. But it will actually tell us when it's up and running and give us a URL that we can go to, which we will in just a moment. Now, if you wanted to do this asynchronously, you can ta uh, tack on to the command of dash nw for no wait, and it immediately gives you your, um, your command prompt back. But I just wanted to show you how quickly uh, this actually works together. And there we go. We've already gone, gone ahead and started waiting for our re uh, load balancer, and we've bring this up. So if I am correct on this, I should be able to click this link, and there we go. This is our temp statement. Wonderful, right? Now, let's actually get some interesting information around this. So if I go to IBM Cloud, CE application get dash dash name Python example, we get a lot of interesting information about what the status of our actual application is. So if you see here, um, we get our ID name, our URL, uh, where the image is coming from, uh, stats on the actual um, service that is running, and the, revi the revision and the traffic, where you can manipulate all of this to whatever you want. Now, notice, we, notice right here the maximum scale of 10 and minimum scale of 0. 
This is really, really important, especially in the serverless ecosystem. So over a time out of five minutes, if there's no communication to the container coming through the, the ingress, it will go ahead and scale it down to zero, which is really neat. That means I'm only using ser the service for when I need to actually get it done. There's a little bit of a hiccup when it needs to start from zero, but let's say for instance, we wanna make sure that there's always at least one up and running for us. We can go ahead and do IBM Cloud CE update name of Python example, and we can do it of the min of, let's say five. So if I go ahead and do five, we can go ahead and see that things are happening. It should go ahead and change that for us. If we come back over to the code engine and into Python example, as you see, we're redeploying it because we made a runtime change. As you see here, the uh, minimum instances is now five and the maximum instances of of 10. Just let it do its thing. It is still deploying. There we go. It's got our one instance up and running now. And it should go ahead and give us the four instances. Wonderful. So we can go back here in just a moment. There we go. We're waiting on the load balancer to be ready. And then we can go ahead and see this. So let's go ahead and just as it says here, run that exact same get command we did a moment ago and double check that we have everything we expected to. As we see, we have a minimum scale of five and now we actually have five of the instances up and running. As you notice, it is terminating um, the first one to roll it out because it is a configuration change and that's important to know. So we've got five going, but that's not really what we want. We wanna leverage the serverless platform for what it is. So what I'll do is I'll spin it back down to the min of zero and I'll do that dash NW as I mentioned earlier to no wait. So it sends it off and it says, hey, go ahead and do this. Go ahead and go back down to zero and it'll start doing the things in the background. While that's happening, um, let's go ahead and make a change and show you how what I would do to update something. So obviously the name of temp uh, statement is useless in this case. So let's go ahead and change that to um, I'm a little teapot short and stout, okay? And just like we were doing earlier, what we would do is we'd go ahead and build build the, uh, the container. We'd grab it a new version of V2. And it goes and pushes things. This takes a moment um, because we are building it from the ground up here again, um, just to be on the safe side. And then it should only take a couple seconds. And as that's going, um, we'll go back to here and we'll notice now that we have only two instances up and running. But more importantly, our runtime comes back down to zero. So we now know through the command line, we can go ahead and manipulate things that we need to get done. And as you see here, the um, reference is this actually should be one. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'll go ahead and cancel that real quick and go back to one and period. We'll go ahead because we um, we are we when we do the update and we ask for um, code engine to check something uh, to pull it back down. It needs to be the same tag. Otherwise, we need to edit that to make sure it's the difference. That was my mistake, but hey, that's what demos are like, right? So let that happen. And I'll end up pushing it again. Uh, while this is still going, um, there, there is wonderful documentation and there's also logging. So let me take a moment and show you the logs of the actual work. It brings up log DNA for you to be able to see exactly what's happening. And as you can see here, you can search for very specific things, but most importantly, you should notice this line right here where it is saying, it is actually outputting the exact same thing that we were expecting to see, which is wonderful. Okay. All right, so we've now successfully built it. So let's go ahead and do docker run dash IT uh, with port 8080 colon 8080 and go ahead and run that SHA again. And if I go back to 
local host 8080. I'm a little teapot short and stout. So next we've verified, so we need to go ahead and push this back up into our version one. It should only be relatively quick. And as that's going, we'll give it a moment again. Let me show you some other things. Um, we should be able to see, if we go down to this live button, the actual live outputs. Um, as you see again here, we're down to zero instances. So for five minutes, nothing was talking to this. So if I go ahead and click on that application URL, as you see here in a moment, it'll go ahead and spin it up. And we're still running our temp statement because we haven't updated it. And as you see now, we have one instance. And we should be able to come down here and see live. If I go ahead and refresh this a couple times, we should be able to see our get. And there we go. There's our get. There was a small little delay uh, in the logs, mainly because it's aggregating it. But as you see, we get our get. So we actually see communications happening there. All right. There's some very interesting information you can grab from this, but normally you want to just check the, check the steps to make sure everything's working correctly. You can easily manipulate all of these things, either via, um, via the command line or through this runtime. But remember, every time you make one of these changes, it does a full redeploy. So keep that in mind. But because these commands are so straightforward, as hopefully you're seeing, you can easily put this inside of your CI and CD pipelines. So when you do push out um, a change uh, and you merge it into the main, main branch, um, in theory, you should be able to just run these commands and successfully be able to, uh, just successfully be able to get the new change made to it. All right, it's still pushing. That was supposed to be significantly faster, but it is not. And as you see here, um, because we haven't had any communication for uh, a couple moments, we're going back down to zero instances. Just as we saw earlier, here is the version and that traffic in just as we were expecting. And I'll go ahead and speed up this part of the video right now. And there we go. We've gone ahead and pushed up our container into um, our repository, which is great. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and check out a new version of, um, or tell our, our code engine in instance to go ahead and update it. As you saw, um, here's that shot again. If I go back into code engine, I believe there's a way for me to verify um, that we have that same version. And I believe if we click on this and we should see, no, we cannot see that. Um, that is fine. Uh, so what we'll go ahead and do is tell it now to go ahead and update. Now the interesting thing about update is that if you just do the update with no other flags, so we just do IBM Cloud CE application update name Python example, and we'll go ahead and attempt to kick it off. And because I did the no wait, it will go ahead and pull the new version of our application here. As you see, the version four and it's redeploying. And uh, I'll go ahead and wait for the URL again. It's still deploying. There we go. Now we're waiting for the load balancer and we should see one instance, it is ready. And now we have our link just as we saw a moment ago. I click, click on this and now we have this actually out on the real internet. I made a little teapot short and stuff. Again, here's our logs again. As we see, it went ahead and pulled it and it will go ahead and spin down to zero as we did earlier. One final thing. Um, it is as easy to create, it is to de destroy serverless actions. So if I do IBM Cloud, uh, CE application, delete, dash dash name, 
Python example dash f for force. I go ahead and hit that. It deletes it. And now if we come back to our, our, our page and I refresh it, it kicks us off because there's no longer this application, which is exactly what we're hoping for. And as you see here too, it is completely gone also. And that's it. Um, hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you saw something come together, which, I, which is the ultimate goal of this. Uh, please go ahead and start playing with it. It's GA and available now. Thank you so much. Bye.